Our topic is non-calculus for the first time this year. It's called discrete random variables. This is where we start mixing statistics and probability together, and the next two sats will be on this mix of statistics and probability. This sat is looking at discrete random variables, so we're going to start off by defining them today. Um, we use the letter x to denote a distinct set of possible values. Distinct meaning there is not an infinite number of possibilities, there is a distinct number of possibilities. So that might be number of children in a family, it might be toys broken per thousand, it might be number of students in a classroom. You're looking at distinct whole numbers and for the capital X denoting a set, we have different outcomes denoted by lower, like lowercase x's with subsets. So this might be outcome one, outcome two, outcome three. Right. This isn't within our topic at the moment, it's the next topic, but continuous random variables can also be denoted with an x, and they contain infinite possible outcomes. These will be things like heights, volume, etc. So the thing you need to be sort of comfortable with is that for x being a random variable with possible outcomes x1, x2, x3, etc. Each of those outcomes has an associated probability, p1, p2, p3. All the probabilities are between 0 and 1. That's what we understand about probability. You can't have a negative or you can't have a probability greater than 1. This is a fancy way of saying of the sum of all probabilities from 1 to n. So if you add all the probabilities together, they should add to 1. And that's a lot of fancy notation for things that we've looked at previously in probabilities. There is outcomes, they have different probabilities, the probabilities add to one. So this can be displayed as a table or a graph. For example, if you're looking at tossing a pair of coins and saying the number of heads you get, that is outcome one, so zero number of heads, and there's a quarter of a chance of that happening. One head happens half the time, two happen, heads happens a quarter of the time. That's the same information shown there. You can think about this as x1, x2, x3, p1, p2, p3. So the probability is matched up with each outcome. All right. Any guesses what uniform discrete random variable is? What do you mean by the word uniform? Uniform. Uh, same. Same, same probability. So standard or same probability. So uniform might be a dice, for example, or picking a card out of a fair deck. There is the same probability with all of them, and that means the probability is normally one on n, where n is the number of possibilities. All right, mode and median. And I know mode and median are things we most commonly associate with stats, but they have a meaning in probability as well. The mode is the most likely outcome. The median is when the cumulative sum of the probabilities equals 0.5. And here's where we sort of start getting to new content. This is what's called a probability distribution. So it's a formula for a set number of x values. In this case, one, two, three, four. And this formula can deliver us the probability for each x value. So if we sub in one, two, three, four to here, you're in PGO1 now. Oh, this is in your class. That will explain when you get down there. Part of me was tempted to let him sit down and just see how long it would take. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, if you sub in the different values of x, it gives you a series of numbers. If this series of numbers adds to 1, then it's what we would call a valid probability distribution. Note there are two criteria, not just add to one, they also have to be all positive. So it would be possible for a function to spit out like minus a half, positive a half, positive a half, positive a half. Minus a half and then three positive halves would add to one, but it wouldn't be a valid probability distribution because one of the probabilities would be negative. So for this, and it probably makes, make a little note to yourself, that these all have to be positive for it to work out. So P of X has to all be positive? Yeah, yeah. Anytime you see a negative probability, it's not a valid distribution. All right, so let's do a quick example. And these examples are gonna seem very basic to start with, but it's 
about setting up the terminology here. Probably distribution of for Jason scoring X home runs during each game of his baseball career is given in the following table. So the property of him scoring one home run is 0.3333. The property of scoring two home runs, three home runs, four home runs, five home runs, etc. So what's the value of P2? Well, it's probably him scoring two runs. Yeah. 0 0.1 and Beautiful, easy. Find the value of A. Let's add them up. No, as these have to add to one. Yeah. We happy we can get A? Yeah. yeah. I'm guessing we're actually going to need it. Can someone grab their calculator? The probabilities have to add to one. So if you add these and do one minus the sum of P1 up to five, then you're going to get A. <laughs> Not zero chance. A is the probability he'll score zero runs. Yeah, no, but five. That's pretty yeah. high. <laughs> yeah, and you can feel it's going to be pretty high. That's like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's going to be like 0.5 or something. Like half the time. Half the time. <laughs> but if you watch a baseball game, well, you know, yeah. some of their players probably would have a half the chance of scoring zero home runs. Oh, zero to All right. First bit of math of the year. First of the year. All right. Draw a graph of px against x. That would be this. x here, px here, and it's distinct. So if I have zero, I'm going to draw that up to there, and I'm going to say that is 0 0.5488. And then 1. So we're near the height. And that level there is 0 0.3333. So note the graph has them not connected because they are distinct values. And it just shows it like that. I'm not going to waste your time by graphing the rest of it. I'm sure you could as well. All right. Find the mode and the medium. Mode is the most commonly occurring one. So what's the most commonly occurring outcome here? Zero. So most of the time, he scores zero. Mode, most common. Median is the middle result. And the way, this isn't a very good example of middle result, but the middle result is you start here and you keep going until the probability sums to one, 2.5. Zero. But it's also zero because it's there. So both mean, sorry, both median and mean, goodness, median and mode are zero in this case. All right, quickly now. For the next half thousand. Yeah, I mean the second half of this lesson. Um, I would like you to make a start on those questions, and the second half, I will teach you the next bit. Yes.